You up to speed now on COVID-19. Three things to know as you wake up this morning. Number one, the number of deaths in the U.S. now nearing 11,000. However, we're learning that nearly 20,000 people in the U.S. and close to 300,000 worldwide have now recovered from COVID-19. Important context there. Number two, social distancing seems to really be working here in North Carolina. New predictions show the curve that we've talked about all the time may actually be flattening in our state compared to what it looked like, say, a, a week or so ago. And we are less than, away, less than a week away from our peak, which experts predict will hit on April 13th. Number three, eye-opening new numbers here in Mecklenburg County from uh, about this outbreak. There have been more than 740 reported cases here. We are learning that three in four COVID-19 cases in Mecklenburg County are adults under the age of 60 years old. Wake up Charlotte's Billie Jean Shaw picking up our team coverage right now in South Carolina and Billie Jean, the Palmetto State finally becoming really one of the last states in the country to go ahead and mandate that everybody stay at home. Good morning, Benny. People have been calling for Governor McMaster to make this order or this call for weeks now, and it's now going into effect uh, today. And if you don't follow the rules, you could be faced with a $100 fine or up to 30 days in jail. Today at 5 o'clock this evening, South Carolina's work or home order begins. This means all residents must stay in their homes indefinitely unless they're going to the following places. Work, an essential business such as a grocery store or pharmacy, to visit family, or for recreational purposes, like spending time outside. Please Governor please Henry McMaster fire. putting tighter restrictions on South Carolinians after Devise reports of people refusing officials. to practice social distancing, passing the virus throughout communities at record pace. There are now more than 2,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the Palmetto State. 48 people have died. Too many people are on the roads, too many people are on the waters, too many people are in the stores, too many people are not requiring with our, with our requests concerning social distancing. In the days leading up to the order, South Carolina was among nine states without a full stay-at-home order. North Carolina issued an order last week. Experts say what happens across state lines will impact people in Charlotte. We want to make sure everyone is doing as much social distancing as possible. And speaking of social distancing, if you plan on going out to some stores, those essential businesses, know that Governor McMaster is also uh, ordering stores to limit the number of customers that come in at one time. So you may have to wait in line before going to pick up what you need. Reporting in South Carolina, Ben, back to you. The new normal for a lot of us. All right, Billie Jean, thanks. Our team coverage continues with NBC's Tracy Potts live in our nation's capital. And officials are not putting out a, a nationwide stay-at-home order. We know that, but they are are saying now more than ever, you should be keeping your distance. Hey, Ben, good morning, everyone. So President Trump is suggesting that the official in his administration who wrote this report might be playing politics. The report shows that hospitals all over the country do not have what they need to diagnose and treat coronavirus patients. Directly to the states. The states seem to be very happy. Most of the critical needs are are being more than met. But a new health department inspector general's report of 300 hospitals shows their number one concern is a critical shortage of supplies, including test kits. President Trump says that's not entirely Washington's problem. States can do their own testing. States are supposed to be doing testing. Hospitals are supposed to be doing testing. Do you understand that? With the federal government, listen to me, with the federal government, we're not supposed to stand on street corners doing testing. We are nowhere near the level of testing that we need to get. With nearly 2 million coronavirus tests done so far, the nation's death rate is climbing, now topping 10,000. New York is seeing a slowdown, but the nation's top infectious disease expert questions whether normal will ever look the same. If you want to get to pre-coronavirus, you know, that might not ever happen in the sense of the, the fact that the threat is there. President Trump says he's open to working with Democrats on a second stimulus to help the economy. We know already that the acceleration of the pace of this virus and this assault, not on the lives, but the livelihood of American people, that we must do more. That, the president says, could include a second round of direct payments to Americans struggling to make ends meet. What everyone really wants to know here, when is all of this going to be over? 
Asked about that, President Trump said he can't say yet if social distancing guidelines will be lifted at the end of the month. I'm Tracy Potts for Wake Up Charlotte. All right, 538 now turning to other big developments in the COVID-19 outbreak from overnight. A CATS employee here in Charlotte has tested positive for COVID-19. CATS says the employee's job uh, requires minimal interaction with riders. CATS is working to follow protocols set by Mecklenburg County Public Health to make sure those riders are safe. A good Tuesday morning. I'm Richard Devane here in Uptown. Yesterday, city leaders got together virtually discussing some ways that some grant money, some federal grant money could actually go to help the citizens of Charlotte. They also discussed more teeth, adding more teeth to the social distancing problem. A lot of folks in Charlotte aren't social distancing. The police chief says that if the health department determines that they need to, they will enact more and have more citations and possibly more arrests. Wisconsin's presidential primary going on as planned today. The state Supreme Court ruled the governor cannot postpone it. He wanted to move the election to June over coronavirus fears, but the uh, Supreme Court, both the U.S. and the state one, decided he did not have the authority to do that. Trending this morning, a way to support local restaurants during this tough time. Wake Up Charlotte's Rachel Lumberg joins us now with what's called the Great American Takeout Movement, and that's taken off. There is a nationwide push to support local restaurants by ordering takeout, pickup food, and delivery services. And the Great American Takeout is back. It does exactly that. It supports our local restaurants and encourages you to do takeout. And today is the day. So they're back for a third time. They've already done this a couple other times. And what they do is they encourage you to use the hashtag to get involved to order takeout on Tuesday. And they also partner with other businesses to support food and bev employees, different funds that are going on to raise money to keep these people employed and getting a paycheck. They're going to be picking one person, hopefully you're that lucky one, let us know if you are, to have free takeout for an entire year so you have to follow along with the rules. You can check them out on social media. Tons of places to support around here. I just went to charlottesgotalot.com and you can click where you live and see all the restaurants that are participating and offering takeout, delivery, and pickup options. And Valentine, these were just a handful that I selected there. And I also tweeted out the link to support um, if you want to check it out. Maybe if you're in Dilworth, Miles, Myers Park, South Park, you name it, you can find it. Surveys are going out to see what is the most popular takeout food right now across the country. I pulled North Carolina and South Carolina. Take a guess. Nachos is North Carolina. Fries is South Carolina, which I found are pretty popular across the country right now. So text us what you are going to be ordering, where you're ordering your takeout from, and maybe some good meals that you've been cooking for your family during this quarantine. 704-329-3600.